in an experiment with these kestrels, researchers added eggs to some nests of, keras, of these kestrels uh, and took eggs away from other nests of these kestrels. And what they found is if they took eggs away from a nest and gave, donated them to another nest, the parents were more likely to survive that following winter. If they added eggs to a nest, the parents were less likely to survive. So more offspring means lower parent parental survival, increased reproduction. Uh, higher, lower reproduction means a higher rate of survival than normal. So you see this nice trend, uh, nice in the sense that it's, it's clear, not that it's necessarily to the benefit of the kestrel, but there is a trade-off between uh, your likelihood of surviving and the number of offspring that you produce. So there's trade-offs between survival and reproduction. It's a balancing act. And that balancing act can be extended to uh, not just uh, so whether how, ma how many offspring are produced, uh, but the quality of those offspring. And by quality, I really mean quantity and how much, uh, how many resources are dedicated to each of the offspring. What I mean by that is there are some plants that produce lots and lots of tiny little seeds. Uh, for example, dandelions. And they have these, uh, this, this uh, what's called a pappus of capillary bristles, which is the thing that acts like the umbrella that carries them on the wind helps them to disperse far and wide, and you can see this dandelion is producing dozens and dozens of uh, these fruits, or these seeds. Seeds are what's inside the fruit. Whereas this Brazil nut tree, and yes, did you know the nation of Brazil was named after this Brazil nut tree? Uh, this Brazil nut tree produces its seeds, uh, which are very large. The Brazil nut is actually a seed that is in a pod. So you've got not very many seeds, and they're very large, so each seed has a lot of uh, resources, a lot of provisions in it, so that uh, it can grow within the Amazonian uh, rainforest. So a trade-off between size and how much you can disperse your offspring. These ones aren't going to be dispersed as far, because they're much larger and they don't have any adaptations for wind dispersal. Just this big seed pod dropping off the tree doesn't dis uh, disperse as far. And this is an adaptation uh, for a fairly consistent habitat. Having offspring that don't need to be distributed as far. With dandelions, they tend to be in more uh, variable Climates, you might think, Moilon's not a variable climate all that much, but being able to disperse far and wide is an adaptation for dandelions to uh, disperse into recently changed uh, environmental conditions and colonize it very quickly. So there's, in general, uh, we can classify selection into two categories. Selection uh, as far as what the, the, the life history strategy will favor. Uh, K selection, and where K is the uh, carrying capacity, is another way of saying, another way to say that is density dependent selection, selects for life history traits that are sensitive to population density. So it's trying to maintain uh, the carrying capacity of the organism. R selection, where R is the intrinsic rate of growth, is also known as density independent selection. It selects for life history traits that are going to maximize reproduction. So trying to build up the population rather than maintain a uh, population at close to the carrying capacity. 
So there is variability, there is a gradation between R selection and K selection, but uh, we can look at R selection and K selection to understand how different organisms uh, have, ad have adapted their life history. So there are many factors that are going to regulate population growth in a density-dependent fashion. So uh, one of the essential questions of ecology is why isn't everything everywhere? Why isn't it that uh, we live on a planet that is completely covered in dandelions or elephants or puffballs? What stops a population from growing indefinitely? There's got to be some sort of resource limitation, certainly. But is that the only thing? Uh, or, or why do some populations show radical changes over time, whereas others can remain stable? So the factors that regulate population size can be classified as density independent or density dependent. Uh, contributors to uh, population regulation. So with in density independent populations, the birth rate and the death rate do not change with population density. So you add more and more individuals, the birth rate is going to stay the same. In density dependent populations, the birth rates are going to fall and the death rates will rise uh, when you reach some uh, when you get close to the carrying capacity, when the density gets to be uh, very high, a lot of individuals per unit area. So if you have a density-independent birth rate, uh, the birth and death rate per capita are going to remain fairly level, even as population density increase. Uh, if you have a density-dependent population, uh, when the population density is low, your birth rate is going to be greater than your death rate, uh, birth greater than mortality, and the population is going to continue to grow until the density reaches this uh, equilibrium point that we're going to call Q. And then once you've reached Q, uh, this equilibrium density, or you reach the carrying capacity of an area, then your mortality rate is going to increase, your birth rate is going to decrease. So this is what we see in density-dependent populations. This is what we see in density-independent populations, the red line. So density-dependent uh, factors that regulate birth and death rates are an example of negative feedback. So remember, we talked about negative feedback, with, like when we talked about the regulation of uh, cellular respiration. If you have a high concentration of ATP, you're going to slow down glycolysis uh, to control resources, manage resources, make sure you don't uh, over-invest in any one particular metabolic pathway. But there are a number of these density-dependent birth uh, and death rate controlling factors, things like competition, territoriality, disease predation. Let's look at these uh, one by one rather than just looking at this list. 